change is easy, whichever one you want to call it. <laughs> Good afternoon, Chuck. Good afternoon, Lori, and, and welcome, folks. We're going to spend a little bit of time this afternoon talking about uh, the probably one of the biggest traumatic elements of, of a continuing educator's life, and that is changing the software that you depend on for your livelihood. And again, what we're trying to help you out today with is to indicate that although change is hard with ACEWARE support and with our tools, we're going to make it easy, and that's what we'll talk about. So what we'll try to do today is cover for you some of the advantages of the software. Uh, most of you may not have seen uh, the ACEWARE software solutions. We'll have an opportunity to walk you through those. Um, we'll talk about the cost uh, investment involved in doing that. Again, what will you be your benefits and how might you proceed to go forward in terms of doing this change process. So um, with that, again, our goal is to take 40 minutes or so to give you some content and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, questions will be handled through the text mode, and Lori is handling the, uh, uh, if you would, the mic there. And so if you've got a question anywhere along, type it in the box, and Lori, I'll pause for a breath from time to time, and Lori will read me any questions that are appropriate at the time. Otherwise, we'll deal with them toward the end of the session. And of course, if you have to leave early, uh, we'd be happy to get back with you again. So. What are some of the things that we think our ACEWARE registration solutions offers? And certainly, improve staff productivity. And we'll show you some of the tools when we get to the live demo. Painless reporting. And I don't know that painless can ever be a term, but the idea of complete and full and accurate and flexible reporting. And we'll talk about that. A tremendous array of tools available to you to help you get the reports you need to make decisions about your program. Marketing tools, again, integrated elements, CRM, integrated email, the ability to put notes on students, all things that help you track uh, your program people and get them into the classes you want. Control of your web pages. Uh, a lot of competitors offer a web-based system or web uh, pages but they're pretty cookie cutter. You have to use whatever everybody else uses. Our model really allows you to design those web pages, make them look, fit, dance, act exactly like, well, very close to what your own web pages are. So that if you're making the move, you won't be shocking your participants with an all of a sudden brand new web design. Now, certainly if you want to be creative, we can go with you, but the idea is it can blend in with your current web pages. Data cleanup tools. Again, data, uh, there is no magical data cleanup element, but we provide you a number of tools that help you eliminate duplicate names, clean up duplicate records, basically ensure that you try to have the best set of records in your system, uh, both for your own benefit and also if you're reporting to agencies or state reports or to a board of directors, you're guaranteeing, we're helping you ensure that your data is the best it can be. Favorite reports, and those are just a few of the things we'll cover. And of course, one of the new elements with our new version 8.0 is that we offer a SQL Server version of the software. So. I want to talk about the student manager, or the two sides of our ACEWARE solution. First is what we call the back office. This is our product called student manager. Uh, we actually do offer a back office version without the web. Uh, we'll talk about prices at the end. We will give you prices. There are no surprises here. And then, of course, the web component, which is a fully integrated course publishing system for the web. Again, these are both ACE web pages, and you'll note how unique each one is. These were designed for the client, by the client, to be able to match up to the web page that they have as an, as an institution. What that means for you is that you have the power of a local server-based system with a real-time 24-7 self-service web registration, and that's a lot that people want. And again, it's a tool that works for your program. So let's take a live look at the system. I'm going to tab to uh, my desktop. If I get to the desktop, here we go. 
and run the demo. And again, this is the back office element. It's a loads on a local server. Uh, all it needs is launch from your desktop. And each user has a username and password. When you log into the system, it does several things. It looks for callback notes, reminder notes. This is an, an example of the integrated course reminder note. For upcoming classes, you can send a private email to each student in those classes, basically telling them, reminding them, hey, you're registered in our course. Here's your information. If there's any details about that course, you can indicate that. Hit the fire away button. Everybody in, that, in those upcoming courses gets a private reminder email. Um, base menu, this is the main menu of the administrative or the staff side of the system. You'll note there are a number of shortcuts that will take you where you want to go quickly. Uh, you've got a full menu of items across the top. Uh, just for example, I, I want to hit, and I'll come back to this, but the reports. The reporting area, again, Student Manager and Aceware have, were born in the continuing higher ed realm. Um, my background is continuing education. I, I'm the founder of the company. I spent 15 years working in continuing higher education, University of Nebraska-Lincoln and at Kansas State University. I ran conferences. I ran short courses, developed a certificate program. So again, the kind of reports that we've built in this system are reports that are intended to meet the kind of needs continuing ed, workforce ed, an OSHA lifelong learning program needs to handle. And we'll get to a few of those in a little bit later. I wanted to first show you the basic, the three big screens, kind of what we call the, the big three or the holy trinity of a registration system. First would be the student record. And our lookup routine is what we're really excited about. It basically offers, I can't print this, but I can say it, a Google-type search. You start typing in a name, Havlicek, A-V-L, and you'll note as I start to type, it eliminates all records except the ones that have the letters in that I'm typing. Well, that's great for last name, but what if I'm looking for a firm? Well, let's clear this. If you start typing a part of a firm name, ACE, A-C-E, now we've got ACEWARE, ACE Hardware, ACEWARE Systems. Once I start typing WHERE, I eliminate everything except ACEWARE. So again, very flexible system. I'm going to get back to Havlicek. As I hit Enter to select that name, I get a special needs notice, hard of hearing. My wife would tell you that's more true than a joke. But that at the person record, you'll see that now we can edit any element about that person. Uh, the notes record, special needs notes, uh, is what was popping up when I went into the record. You can make comments. You can put in contact history. There is an integrated CRM. You've got the ability to put in additional details, including tying photographs to the record. You can tie documents to the record. You can, there is an integrated financial aid piece, which is probably more for technical and career centers. And you have a unique credential system. Again, probably more in use for technical schools or professional development programs that might need to track this. But what this allows you to do is to create an unlimited number of links to other experiences this student has, and that can be used for history, for instance, courses that might be taken from another institution. It could have to do with particular skills. Again, a tremendously flexible way for you to track information about your student. Okay, name information. One of the other things about the records in our system, every main screen has a quick report area, so that on the student record, from the quick reports, you can pull the quick report system up and be able to run. OK, here's a transcript with the credentials. Bam, there's a report. All the courses the person took and all of their credentials listed. Again, that's just part of the reporting system. Uh, from the name record, you can view their courses taken. 
Lori, is my screen refresh coming up OK? Yes, it is. OK, edit registration, which shows the registration the student might have. And I'm trying to think. Then the special notes, uh, which has to do with some special tools. Integrated email, again, you can send emails directly from the user record. And of course, we'll talk about mass email in a minute. All right, that is the basic course information, or the name information on the record. A couple of notes. Number one, um, it has, well, if, before we leave it, we also need to mention there is a firm link contact. So again, if you do business and professional programs, an OSHA program or community ed may not care about this, but a professional program can link a name to a company and be able to see who the other employees of that company are, be able to see whether or not there are registrations with that company. And if you have private contracts with that company, you can see what contracts might be on file with that particular company. Um, OK, I'm going to, Lori, any questions popping up on the chat mode that you'd like to deal with now? Nope, you're doing very well. All right, so we've got the name record. The last thing we would say about the name database in our system is that you can add names to the names database as contacts or as inquiries. So it supports a full-featured CRM or contact tracking element. As part of that, we've got over here a callback date where you can indicate dates to be reminded to call the student back. And then as part of the contact history, you can put in verbatim notes or meeting notes with them. You can put in notes about what you might need to do with a callback. Um, and again, all part of the information you're able to track about a student. All right, let's go look at a course. So looking up a course, again, the Google type search allows you to search by course number. 14 F ACE will give us all of the courses that start with 14 F ACE. Now, if I say, well, wait a minute, I'm looking for all of the courses that have to do with credit cards. So if we said credit, we just start typing credit, and immediately it searches just the programs that have the word credit in the title. So again, very flexible in terms of searching. This dilemma of having Excel classes that you might call introduction to Excel, beginning Excel, Excel for dummies. Uh, I don't happen to have one in here. I don't have an Excel class. I'll say the word manager. Well, manager, I have mastering manager, extend student manager, processing cards in student manager. So again, a keyword lets you find that, that record anywhere in your database. I want um, a 14F class, and I want the 14 student manager. Here we go, mastering student manager. This is a course activity record. And again, whether you're doing a workshop, a course, a one-day seminar, a six-week program, a 12-month training program, you would create the activity in what we call our course screen. Uh, allows you to put up everything you need to know about the program. We won't go through all of these elements, but the main things are, number one is a catalog description. So you tie the description of the course to a catalog table where you can indicate course description in text mode, you can do course description for HTML for the web. You can reference benefits and materials, have a contact name. You can do prerequisites. Again, uh, OSHA programs um, may not have prerequisites. Professional programs might. So a, uh, you need to take beginning algebra before you can take advanced, or you have to take introduction to leadership before you get into mastering leadership traits. Um, so your description. Um, other details about the class, this is for OSHA programs particularly now. If this was a class that you had to be an OSHA member to participate in, you can indicate that you must be an OLLI member before you can even take this class, whether you charge a fee for it or not. It basically is a members-only class. Um, fees, 
ability to have an unlimited number of fees. If you're having to fight with a campus credit system that has to have a separate section for each fee, don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, our system allows you to create as many fees as you want. You can display them on the web or not. You can have automatic early bird fees, and you can have special member-only fees. Um, again, and coupon codes for discounts, I don't have one on this demo, but you can create optional fees that are discounted coupon-related fees. Uh, instructors, ability to add an unlimited number of instructors. Each instructor can have a payment, re uh, payment information. How are they paid? Hourly, percent of gross, percent of net, what is their pay rate, and the system will generate your, your contract salary for that particular student you all, or that particular instructor. You can also have here a Likert scale rating of the instructor's student evaluations. And so you can keep that as part of the permanent record. So we can go to the instructor record now, look at their courses taught history, and if you record it, you could see exactly what the evaluation rating was for this instructor's last 12 classes. Um, all right. Uh, Lori, how are we doing? Any comments so far? Are we doing good? We're doing very well. Thank you. Comments. Again, as part of a class, notes for a receipt. A lot of times you might have, maybe it's an OSHER dance class, or you have a dance class, you want to tell those uh, members where non-marking souls. Or if it's a professional class on personnel management, bring your standard operating procedures or bring your employee manual to the class. Uh, those are the kind of notes you can send to the student. And then finally, the publish the status of the system. You are building this class from your own desktop. So you're, you're doing all the information as you're building the class in order to do the registration. To put this class online and allow your students to register, all you have to do is hit the publish register, allow publish, allow registration option. And again, there are multiple options in here. There are a couple of these, no publish register. If you are a private, if you're doing a contract training class, this would allow you to put up a class for online registration and hide the URL from your public website. In essence, you could send your company a private URL that would put on the company intranet their employees could register, but the general public wouldn't see it. Again, uh, part of the main system. OK, I'm going to take a breather again. Questions about the course setup? Uh, there is a question. If you add a prerequisite to the program, like Ollie, does it stop the person from registering for it if they do not meet the prerequisite? Yes. Uh, now, that's not a prerequisite. A prerequisite would be that you must have taken uh, basic student manager 8.0 before you take advanced student manager 8.0. The option with the OLLI is that this is that you must have a card before we even let you into the door of the restaurant to get the stuff. So, but the answer is yes. It will prevent them from getting into this class unless they have an OLLI membership. I think that handled the answer on that. Okay. And okay. also on the course screen, what is the registration warning message? Registration warning message would be if you book the class. Okay, we booked the class for ACEWAR headquarters, and the instructor says, oh my gosh, I can't make that date. I've got to change the dates. So what you would do, and that would be you've already published it. You've maybe printed the catalog. You could put in a note in here, note, new class times new class times so that when staff go into this class, they would get a message to say, note new class times, and they could say, uh, they, would, they would tell the student, you know, uh, originally scheduled, and I'll spell that on XXYY. So that's the idea. If there's some reason after you've initially started the class that you wanted to warn them uh, about a special circumstance, you could put that in there. Things like parking lot. Parking lot under construction, you'd say, no, parking bad on, on the 1st of June, use alternate parking mode. Um, that's the kind of thing you can put in there. All right. 
I think that's all for the course screen. For now. All right. Well, before we leave the course, we're just getting started. Before we leave the course screen, I want you to highlight some special tools down here. Uh, number one, quick reports. There is the obligatory student list. Bam, you get a list of students. That's great. Okay. Maybe I'd like a nicer report. Well, here you go. You can do eight clicks and get eight different reports. And I'm going to go ahead and run a few of those. Name roster, attendance roster, name tag certificates. OK, five clicks, five reports. There's a roster. Let me clear my little uh, erase all drawings. Whoop, 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 hang on. There we go. This is a class roster. Uh, this is an attendance roster showing the days of the class. Name tags for all names or selected name tags. Anybody in the conference business knows you printed your name tag last night for tonight's conference and three people registered today. So you could choose to register or print name tags for just the people who enrolled today. Certificates. Well, maybe not everybody earns a certificate. Some people didn't attend. Some people didn't pay. So you have the option to go through and select, well, Willard and Leslie didn't pay, so we're not going to print their certificates. Everybody else gets a certificate. And then the faculty contract letter, and then finally, well, that is it. Uh, the, rest of, the other element about quick reports is sending quick emails to class. An email blast, that can be done. Budgeting, the ability has a built-in tool to generate a course budget. Put in your fees, how much you're going to take out of the fee for per person cost put in estimated expenses, and it will give you a go-no-go -go number and a break-even number based on your estimated expenses uh, on the program. Um, Pocket Ledger is a tool that allows you to track expenses for the program. It skunk works typically. You'll have to still use your campus system, but it allows you to get profit and loss uh, elements. Other tools we won't get into are Mass Register, attendance tracking, and a special option called course bundling. All right, uh, then finally, in terms of a registration, we'll look up a name and register somebody into a class. I'm going to pick up Mr. Bush, George W., and I'll register him into a class, and this would be staff registration. Membership has not been met. Now, again, as a staff member, I can override that. Note new class. There's that warning message. At this point, I'm in the registration. This is the key element. This is your tracking code. How do they find out about this class? And obviously, you'll want to ask that, because that's where you determine what marketing efforts of yours are actually bringing in the money. Um, you can do different fees. You can, you can save multiple seats in the class. Uh, you can do fee adjustments, cancellation, refund, coupon adjustments, credits, um, and you'll store our CEUs. It'll track a grade. We go to the payment side. Again, you can do credit card, cash, billing. You can split payments. Very flexible payment system. It has an escrow system involved. We're going to go ahead and call this a check. We can write in the check number hit the print receipt and close, and either generate do an email receipt or a standard receipt. And so we, our mail server isn't on the demo here so that it, yes, we want to print a conventional receipt so that we've got a standard receipt and then an email receipt. I didn't have the mail server set up on the demo. So now that we've got George registered, we see his new class in the data in the system. <clears throat> and um, he's plugged in. I'm about ready to move to the website and show you the website of the piece if there aren't any particular things, and then we'll come back and take a look at some of the reports under the normal reports menu. So, Lori, any other comments or any questions before we leave? Name, course, payments, registration, payments and registrations we glossed over real quickly. We're good to go. Okay. And I will go back to this again, but I want to reiterate what we're looking at right now is a demo of the system that you can download from the student manager demo download site. And so again, 
you're able to go to our website, download this demo, and play with everything in it except the email. You can't email out of the demo um, as you're exploring the system. All right, let's go to the website now. From the main, um, our main web page, you can go to AceWeb products or you can go to demos, AceWeb demo. I'm going to start you off with AceWeb under the product side of it. And basically because it gives you about 30 different sites. These are live AceWeb customer sites. And you can go in and see how they're put together, how each one is generally different, unique from the other in terms of the custom design. What I would recommend you do to really explore, though, is go to the Ace Web demo. And this is our web sandbox. And what you can do here is create an account, go in, create an account. And then once you're in the account, you can go in, look up courses. You can, there are multiple ways. These are just a few of the examples of how you might be able to publish your programs. Standard is generally you'd create a single tier or two tier category list. This is a two tier. So we have continuing community memberships, OSHER. We have continuing ad and now we have Aceware users, business management windows. We go to Aceware users and now we're getting the list of classes that are part of the Aceware user support set. Extend student manager, mastering student manager, processing credit cards. Student finds a class they want. They can enroll themselves. They can enroll somebody else. Uh, they can click on the location. And actually, if we put the dates in right, you can or put in the location address right, it'll give you a Google map to the course location. Um, and again, this is an example of a membership. If you've got a membership requirement, um, you can actually encourage, and I think for the person uh, who had the OSHER question, you can allow a person to enroll in a OSHER membership and immediately enroll in classes. As long as the OSHER membership is in the cart, the system will allow them to enroll in those OSHER programs so that it basically they don't have to enroll in membership and then come back later and, and enrolling classes. They can do that all in the same shopping cart or the same checkout. Enrolling themselves, enrolling somebody else. And again, uh, whether it's an OSHA member enrolling a spouse or whether it's a foreman enrolling an employee in a training class, uh, the system allows uh, a third party enrollment, a, a mother enrolling their children in, uh, in, in kids programs. Um, again, very flexible in terms of how you might enroll. Uh, enrolling yourself, uh, again, a log on. Uh, returning students can log back in. Uh, new students can create account on the spot, finish the enrollment process. Uh, if a student comes in, doesn't remember their password, uh, they can do a password reset. I'm going to go ahead and log in, and I'll bet I am already enrolled in this class, Lori. So we'll see what it tells me. No, I'm not enrolled in that class. <clears throat> so I'm now in the enrollment cart stage. Uh, this is your marketing, of course. How did I learn about this course? Uh, what's my fee? I'm a staff member. And you'll note, uh, Chuck Havlicek, I'm coded as a staff member in the demo database. So it automatically gave me the staff fee discount. That's, again, one of the other benefits that you can set up is person-level fees uh, in the system. Now, again, save to cart, add more courses, enroll somebody else in this class. The cart allows you to add other people to the same class, other people to different classes, multiple people in multiple classes, and all have one particular checkout. I'm going to go ahead and check out. Uh, so it would show you, here's the final order. Is this good to go? And of course, we don't have the payment gateway uh, referenced, but we do want to reference. We support 12 different payment gateways um, as part of our base set. And that those get payment gateways, uh, uh, and we can make custom payment gateways if you're not in there. Those are the ones included as part of the base set. And I closed. I close the student manager, so let's see if I can get back to 
get back to my session without having to log in again. And it didn't. So <clears throat> I, I closed the wrong browser. Sorry about that, Lori. Uh, so anyway, at that particular point, it would have registered me in this fake system and be ready to go. Back to your view of the sandbox as a person evaluating the system. Um, again, once you're in the system, you'll have the ability to go in and see the different modes available in terms of how you might show classes. Classes by instructor. You can go in. If I'm a real fan of Chuck Havlicek, I can see all the classes that Chuck is teaching. <clears throat> if I am in a particular location, I want to be just near uh, Nebraska Center, I can see all the classes that the Nebraska Center system has. As a student, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I am still logged in. Actually, the cart, there's my cart. It's still there. Let's get back to my, get back to my cart here. Students, my cart. Okay, I, I, I'm still in the cart. Let's finish that checkout process, submit the payment, and of course, in a real system, it would have redirected to the payment gateway you're using. The student would enter their data. It is PCI uh, compliant, meets all the rules and regs, because a student never enters a credit card into your system. So it really takes care of the PCI element for you. <clears throat> a transaction completed. An email would be mailed to the student. An email is also mailed to the registrar. And then that student appears in the class. Um, back to the student profile. Once a student has logged on, they can go in and look at their profile. Uh, they can go in, indicate the interests they have. They can indicate if they've got, uh, again, that training manager who is, who is registering other staff or the mother who is registering her children. Uh, you can have proxy candidates or proxy people. These are people whom you've registered into programs before uh, and, and make them available to you on the system. Uh, creating household profiles, so if you wanted to add additional family members, uh, you can create a new record and then pick an address from an existing family member to fill that in. <clears throat> Once, this, once you're logged in as a student, again, uh, you can go in, look at your registration history, show the current courses. You can actually drill to that current course. Again, look at the location, time, instructor, um, so that the student is able to take care of their own, uh, take care of their own data, pretty much. Um, I want to go back to um, Instructor login, the ability of instructors to go in and um, look at their course rosters, uh, be able to put in grades. I'm going to skip over that now. Example, because again, you can go back to the web and go there, because we actually do have the ability for you to, we give you a fake password that actually lets you get into the instructor side. On the main system, I do want to highlight, if you go to examples, you're going to see a lot of the extended features of AceWeb uh, with Student Manager. A, a couple of notes, the only optional charge items besides the base system cost would be course packaging, the um, BOGO, and attendance tracking the attendance tracking element. Uh, all these other elements that you see here, embedded video, special event type courses, express registration, which would represent um, alternate ways that you can set up a web registration, those, those are all part of the base price that you get with the system. There's information for techies out there on administration, and then the link back to our web pages where you can see other customer sites. Well, I'm going to kind of forge ahead, Lori, with the slideshow. Uh, any immediate issues you want to talk about before we wrap up and get to general Q&A? No, we're OK for now. OK. So uh, just quick by way of background, uh, we have 15 full-time staff with over 180 years of CE experience. And again, our company has been serving this business for 25 years. And I think that quote at the bottom, we're not a software company that works in CE. We're CE professionals who work with our continuing ed software. And I think that makes a difference. 
uh, the type of people we serve, uh, primarily university continuing ed, probably followed by professional ed, workforce training, and community ed programs at the two-year and at the K-12 or high school generally based level. Uh, and then certainly OSHA lifelong learning. We have a number of tools designed specifically for OSHA lifelong learning. I'm going to run back to manager. One of the things under the reports is the whole membership tracking, membership retention, which is a key element in the OSHA side. And again, that's part of the base system that we provide. And customer support. And, and I, you said fantastic, and you said, well, that should be fantastic. Well, it really is fanatical. One of the things that we're proud of is that our tech staff, who, who by the way, average uh, eight years or more experience with ACEWARE. So these aren't kids that are pulled off the street. Uh, they're all local. <laughs> they're, they're not overseas. Uh, they're the ones that work with you through the process. So when you buy an ACEWARE product, you get assigned a technician. That technician helps you install the software, help you get trained, and is your ongoing contact to work with throughout the rest of your ACEWARE experience. We have an annual users meeting every year. Uh, we offer uh, regular training with, on, with webinar training and public training. And we offer an up-to-date online help guide. And we have an 800 help number that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our regular hours are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central, but we have an after hours emergency line that is open 24 hours a day. Purchasing student manager. And one of the things we want to tell you, we have an upfront pricing. If you haven't discovered it yet, I will take you there. From the main menu of the ACEWARE system is the price sheet. And basically, this tells you what the story is. The administrative package alone is $14,995. If you want the administrative with the, with the email or with the web registration, it's $30,000, under $30,000. Again, not a lot of optional modules, so you're not nickeled and dimed to death in, in terms of buying the system. So again, we tell you what the prices are up front. We can work with your budget to develop a payment plan. We actually do offer a two-year uh, split an invoice across two budget years. That's part of our base system, if that would be helpful. Uh, we work with you on data migration. We talked about that in the email. Uh, the data migration element is huge. Uh, we've converted literally hundreds of databases from ACEWARE into a system. Generally, a full data migration, name information, course history, some course information. Uh, again, minus pay history. Pay history is the naughty one. We can do between four and 10 hours uh, worth of labor. Um, figuring 900 to $1,500 can do a full data conversion. Uh, three hours private web tutoring, and then probably the thing that is most, oh, and then, of course, help with installation and setup. But our one-year, 110% money-back satisfaction guarantee. So learning more, again, I talked about the demo. I talked about going to the ACEWEB demo. But uh, that is, um, that's the info. We're at that 40-minute mark. Uh, we didn't get a chance to look at reports. But let's take a few questions. And then I do want to go back and show a couple of reports. Uh, and if people, I'm going to roll to that demo uh, side, Lori. And so if people have a particular report area that they'd like to see, you know, text it in the box, and we'll answer that in between answering other questions. How are we doing, Lori? We're doing very well. So we're just going to start random questions, and some of them I'm going to combine. You may recognize yours word for word, and you may not recognize it because <laughs> I've combined it with someone else's. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, when a person is registering, does it prevent them from registering for courses that overlap in terms of time? On the time, on the web, we do not have, I, I hear what you're saying, on the web, there is not a schedule check for the student. Now, there's a schedule check when you as a staff member, I don't know for what it's worth, if you're booking classes in rooms, it'll check for conflicts between a room booking, and it'll check for conflicts with the instructor so that you're not booking an instructor in two places. 
we're not, we don't offer the ability to keep your students from being ninny kumpoops and, and registering for overlapping classes. So I'm sorry the answer is no. All right. look here, can multiple student records be uploaded? And then there was a question earlier about importing and exporting data. So Right. Yeah, multiple Fine. student records being uploaded. Uh, we didn't talk about the tools. Uh, a number of tools in the system. I'll just briefly run through them. There is a very robust report tool set. You can export and import reports so users can share reports with one another. So one OSHA program that has a nice report could email that report to another OSHA program and, and share it. Uh, data cleanup elements, and this is where you can combine names. We talked about combining names, combining firms. This is the import-export. Uh, we have a name import wizard where you can import names from Excel templates. Um, you can do CAS, CAS certification updates. Um, Credit card management, uh, password maintenance, backup data, uh, those are all part of the base set. Now I'm trying to think, I miss, it was updating, importing reports, and then exporting. Now in the reporting, and let's go ahead and, let me go ahead and get to, let me go ahead and get to um, a report to show that. From any, most any report in the system, and I'm going to start with statistics here, names, demographic summary, and I wanted to highlight this because this is a unique piece that you can do cross-tab analysis on your data. So if you wanted to, and of course this is the one, the one report that doesn't have an export, we'll do accounting, one line deadbeat. Every report, just about every report in the system except statistics, has the ability to export the data to an external file. Uh, and again, within the report itself, you can generate the report in multiple formats. You can make a report in PDF. You can make a report in HTML. Um, this is the deadbeat report, which is just a list of people who owe money. If you wanted to run that, we're going to preview it to the screen. I won't export. Uh, we now go to the filter side. One of the cool things, in my opinion, about the report system is that you can have one report template and have a bazillion different filters that you apply to that report template. So you don't have to build a separate report for a separate query or a separate filter. So if I wanted all of the courses beginning with 14 uh, S or 14, 14 S, one for Sam, hit the OK button, and I'm now running for the uh, Deadbeats. I'm going to run the deadbeat report. These are the alternate reports. There are 40 reports in the deadbeat area. And so this is a report of all of the people who registered in 2014 that have a balance due. Um, and again, had we chosen the export option, we could have exported that as, as, as Excel. The other report area, and let me go back to statistics and just run it. Demographic summary. This is that cross tab. So if you wanted to take a look at the students in your database based on the city that they come from, you want to do a geographic analysis. So we're going to do name only, um, well, let's do the standard report. So we're going to do, again, 2014. We're going to look at all of the current registrations. It'll ask us about amount due or amount paid, amount due. So for every city, for students came from who registered in 2014 classes, the number of noses from each city, the number of registrations from each city, percentages thereof, the dollar amount from each city, and the average course fee. So if you're a, ma a marketer, you're saying, well, now which cities are giving me the best bang for the buck in terms of my uh, outreach? Now, so that's on the name side. Uh, there is also a statistical report on the course side where you might want to analyze your courses by subject code. So if I wanted to analyze my course performance by subject code, we're going to say again 2014, and we're going to look at the money here, uh, course summary, new default. So this will tell us for every subject code, how many classes were offered, 
how many had to be canceled, how many enrolled, the average enrollment, the total income, the expenses, and the net income per class, per class subject matter. So again, giving you a set of tools to analyze your data. Okay, I got a little afield, Lori, but I managed to get in a couple reports. What other questions do we have out there? Okay, let's go back to tools and look at password maintenance for a moment, and that will answer a couple of questions people wanting to know if they can restrict staff access based on their role. Right, and so the idea here is that you can define multiple categories. Uh, those are ones that you create based on how you might set up over here, and you'll see names, register, pay, course, web, instructor pay, reporting system, email system, financials. Every one of these areas can be defined from one to six or zero to six with like zero means uh, you're not going to get there, to six means you got everything you want to do. So again, a pretty granular method of being able to control that. Now in addition to the ability to set user access to the system, I'd be remiss in not covering preferences. This again allows you to define your student manager slash ACEWARE system to meet the kind of needs your program has. So. Things like names. What fields do I want to turn on and use in the names table? And you'll note a number of these can be repurposed. So if the field homeowner isn't relevant to me, I could call this alumni and be able to repurpose that field for another purpose. Um, register organization defaults, again, the point is, you have the ability to customize the system to a great deal. Any other questions kind of tying into the um, password access then? Well, Control. I'm going to ask you to go back to preferences for a moment and show the UDFs. Okay. If you had somebody so wanting that to create their own fields. If, if you wanted to create your own fields, there's a couple of things in the system. One is the interest code area, which we'll go back to, but this is the UDFs. We give you a stock set of like 20 UDS for each of the main tables, course register, instructor pay. You have the ability to label those. Again, character, date, numeric, and logical. You can label those however you want. Uh, so again, uh, there is a finite limit. I think it's like 135 fixed fields on the name record. Um, but then in addition to that, you've got the ability, and I'm going to jump back to the name record. Okay, close, look up a name. The interest code area is one where you can define an unlimited number of codes, and whether you use that for tracking an interest, you can actually use it as a way to code members, code lists, code uh, behaviors uh, within the system. So that's an unlimited capability, so that is unlimited. And the other is this whole credential area, where you can have a many-to-one link of as many different codes, categories, lists that you might want in that particular area. All right. How are we doing? Very good. That, that knocks a couple off the list. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have multiple locations for your classes, does the location get notification of the registration, or does it send it to only one location for distribution? Excellent question, excellent question. Um, I said at the beginning when a registration occurs in a class online that a master registrar w gets a note. Now I think you can put two or three emails in the notify part, but that is every registration whether no matter what class it is. However, in the additional info area there is an option here that says people to notify via BCC. So if you are running classes that are off-site and you want the local administrator to do that, you'd put in the local administrator's email. You'd put in the local administrator's email and then any registrations for this particular class, not only would the registrar get the notice, but whoever's emails that you put in the persons to notify would also get a copy. So I can answer that one, yes, that certainly can be done. All righty. I was and showing off, sorry to, about that. I was showing off, I was sorry about that. <laughs> you're allowed to now and again. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm going to make a last call for questions and ask the last question that I have on the book, and 
then well, I have one. I want to show one more about the email blast. There's a couple of marketing tool elements I wanted to reference. But go ahead. What's the question? Okay. Can you add modules, including AceWeb, after your initial purchase? Uh, yes. Uh, on that price sheet that we were looking at, if you buy the base system, which would be the admin system, uh, the one that uh, we're looking at right here, you can go back later and add AceWeb. I think it's like $500 more. You save. You save a few bucks by buying it together, but you can always add updates later. Um, and again, other than that AceWeb $500 savings, there's no penalty for, for waiting on that. I do want to show you a couple of things real quick, folks. And I mentioned the tracking code. And again, as part of the statistical reports area, the tracking code element is the one that allows you to say, what is my promotions doing? What are my promotions doing? Sorry about that. So if we wanted to run this year's registrations, it tells us, for the current year, here's how many registrations I received from these different promotions. And you can actually reference promotion cost and get an ROI number, or if it's a mailing, get a percent return number as part of the base system. The final report that I want to show, and again, all of these reports are in your system, is a unique geographical tracking element. Whether you're doing email blast or you're doing a mailing, uh, you can run a geographical scope. So if I say I want everybody from Aceware, but I only want to do it for people from a given area code. So, and I don't, I don't have it in here. OK, I lie. I don't have it in my demo. Instead, we're going to go to the email launcher, which was the other one I was going to show you. The email launcher tool allows you to filter any group of names you want. Here's a group of people I picked. And now the email wizard comes up, which allows you to create an email either on the fly, or you can pick up an HTML element. Here, this actually, the email that you received uh, when you registered for the webinar, you got an email from Aceware. That email was sent out of Student Manager using the integrated email tool. So again, you can exclude names who have said opt out. You can have a signature line. If you have email blast systems where you need to wait every so many messages to let the system rest, you have a timeout. And you can automatically log a CRM entry. Uh, so again, that is part of the uh, part of the element I wanted to uh, to share there. So, okay, any more questions that have surfaced in the wiggling around here? I've kind of uh, extended my welcome there, but uh, again, we would love an opportunity to visit with you about your situation. And again, if you'd like to have us put together a piece for a key group of stakeholders at your institution. If you'd like references, give us a call, shoot me an email. We'd love to hear from you. Now, any One last gasp? Yes. Very good. If you do the email like you just did, would right. you also pull a list of those who did not have emails? Uh, yes, um, as part of that list. And again, and this is part of the part of the report element. Uh, so if we wanted to run this query, now let's just stay with this. Um, if we wanted to run the query for people with an interest code, we could edit that query. I want to copy that query and modify it. I'm going to copy the query interest code. Oh, I, I can't type. Equals and no email. So we copy that query. There is the new query. We can edit it. Interest code begins with, we're going to add a condition now that email address is an empty field. So now we're going to run that a second time and get people whom, ACE to N, who don't have an email. And naturally, in my database, everybody has an email. But that would have flushed out those people with an interest code. I didn't realize my demo data was that good. Uh, but that would have flushed out those that didn't have emails, and you could send them a postcard or, uh, you know, so that you're not sending postcards to people who have emails if you're already catching them via email. So very good. Um, how are we doing? Any last gasps there, Lori? I think good we're session. done. 
and in the allotted <laughs> amount of time, too. This we did good. <laughs> we did good. We did good. So, well, folks, it's been a pleasure. I, I hope this has been helpful. Um, again, uh, we would love to help you out. Uh, and again, remember that guarantee of ours, uh, because we don't want to have to give you back more money than you paid us. We're going to be pretty careful about making sure we feel we can meet your needs before we even agree to sell you the program. So again, we want to know we've got your we've got a stake in this project uh, partnership we're going to have with you. So, Lori, thank you much. Lori has put together the slides, an excellent job as usual. So, uh, we thank you, and uh, we'll stand by to hear from you to see if we can help. Have a good day, everybody. Bye bye.